How do we speak? Well, there are three different ways that you can answer that question. And the first way that I'm going to answer it is in terms of how we make the sounds of speech. What we do when we speak, first of all, is we take a deep breath. And then we speak aloud. And what we're doing when we speak aloud is we're actually controlling the flow of air out through our larynx to produce a very finely controlled stream, which is very different from how we normally breathe out when we're just breathing to stay alive. And of course, what you can hear is I continue speaking without taking another breath as it starts to really hurt my voice and I start to run out of air altogether. Because what I'm doing with that air is I'm pressing together the vocal folds which come together in my throat, in my voice box, and I'm forcing the air out through them, and they're vibrating, and they're giving me a buzzing sound. And then what I do with that buzzing sound is I'm using that, it's shaping that with the movement of my articulators, which are my tongue and my teeth and my jaw, and I move all those a great deal, as you're going to see in this next video, to shape the sound made at the larynx, and that's how we actually come up with the sounds of speech. This next clip is a sequence of what's called real-time MRI of my colleague Zarina Agnew talking. And what this is literally doing is taking photographs, almost like x-rays, of Zarina's throat and head while she's talking. So you're seeing all the articulators moving and then you can hear her speaking. And the other thing that you can hear is the ping, 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 ping sound from the scanner. So it's, it's quite a weird thing to do. But this should just give you some idea of the amount of movement that goes on, the amount of motor control involved when you're actually talking. This is me trying to use all of my articulators. Of course, we don't have to vibrate our vocal folds to make a sound when we speech. If I just breathe out in that same way, but don't vibrate my vocal folds, and I shape that flow of air using my articulators, I get a whispering sound. Now, what problem with whispering is it's not very loud, so it's not all that useful if you're in a noisy place. The second answer to how we speak is actually to think about what our brains need to do, what our minds need to do in order to control speech. So the first thing that you need to do is have something that you want to say. Now that might be because something said, somebody said something to you or because you want to start a conversation with somebody or because you want to do something strange like this and talk into the computer. And that means that your brain has to come up with the words. You need to have the concept of what you want to say. You need to understand what it is you want to say yourself. You've got to then fill the words into that and the ideas and then build that into a sentence. And we can see brain aerosms associated with this to do with knowledge and understanding that you're actually recruiting to come up with telling the story you want to tell. And then as we go forward into the system, you start to see brain areas recruited to, to do with actually planning the movements of the articulators, how you're going to implement those words into actual movements to make actual sounds. And then we can find brain areas which are actually involved in really precisely controlling the movement of the articulators such that you're actually producing the sounds accurately. So this whole seamless process is going on when we're talking and it's one of the reasons why speech production can be very easily damaged by stroke because this is actually involving a huge number of brain areas. Speak, speech might sound like a very easy thing to do, it's something that we spend a lot of our lives doing, but actually computationally and in the brain it's a very difficult thing to do and a lot of your brain is devoted to actually doing it well. The third answer to the question of how do we speak is that we speak a great deal, we speak a lot. And there seem to be several reasons for this. First of all, speech is by far the most common form of communication between human beings. If you go around the world, you're going to find speech everywhere. There are other things you're going to find, but speech really does dominate. And it's been argued, in fact, that we speak as a way of maintaining bonds and social communication that actually reproduces what other primates do when they start grooming each other and sitting down and picking the fleas and bits of hair out of each other, bits of fluff out of each other's hair. We've actually replaced that. As an anthropologist called Robin Dunbar suggested that we're actually able to have bigger groups of cohesive networks than other apes are able to do because instead of having to sit down and spend half an hour grooming each other, we can interact with each other much more quickly by talking to one another and it seems that one of the reasons why conversation with friends and acquaintances is such a pleasurable thing is it actually is performing many of the same roles of establishing and maintaining social interactions and social contacts with other people by a medium of speaking to them and having a conversation with them rather than having to sit down and groom with them although I have to say it does sound rather nice being groomed. So that's just scratching the surface really about some of the topics that you come across when you find out about how we speak. It's important to think about the sound, you need to think about the brains and you need to think about all the cultural and social reasons why we talk to each other and why we like doing it so much. I hope you find it interesting and I hope that it's something you'd like to find out more about.